Probably the best known relationship on the reef is that between the anemone and there's an anemone fish. There's a pink anemone fish and there's quite a few species found on the reef but probably the most famous are the clownfish from the Nemo movie. So of all these fish, it's the same story. It's the largest, it's the female, the dominant one. The next in size is the male. And if there are any other smaller ones, they'll be non-functional males. Because they actually got it wrong in the movie. If the female dies, the male will change sex and become the female in a couple of weeks. So in fact, Merlin should have become Nemo's mother. But these fish have a great life, living in amongst these stinging tentacles. And you can feel they feel sticky, and that's because of all the stinging cells firing off. But luckily the venom doesn't do us humans any harm. In return, the anemone fish will protect the anemone from butterfly fish, which will come up and pick at these tentacles. But when it's time for these guys to lay eggs, the male and female together will select a patch at the base of the anemone. They'll bite the rock until it's meticulously clean, and then she'll deposit the eggs on it. He'll fertilize them, and for the next two weeks, it's his job, the male's job, to keep the eggs tender. He'll keep blowing on them, keeping the oxygen levels up, and keeping them clean. Once they're fully developed, the eggs will hatch, and the baby and the enemy fish will drift off as part of the plankton. And they'll stay in the plankton for about another two weeks, when they'll go and settle on an anemone somewhere else.